I know we're ready. <clears throat> we found Geraldine. Which, uh, I know you were following me there for a while and you were thinking, where are we going? Um, uh, but uh, we think you're way cooler than five. So. <laughs> five hard time. Uh, the former school that I taught at was Gordo. And if you've never been to a Gordo and Fife baseball game, you are missing out. Um, it, is, uh, it was always against them in the state championships. So. We are the Scottsboro High School Science Club. And I'm uh, Miss Townsend, who sponsored the club. And today, uh, we're going to talk to you guys about um, reading about science. And, and uh, we think it's a lot of fun. And, this is actually how we figure out all this cool stuff, okay? We have a few visitors that came with us today. You guys recognize this guy? Yeah. Anybody know him? Bob. Anybody young know him? <laughs> um, anybody ever heard of Star Trek? Yeah. Okay, yeah, the new Star Trek movie. Uh, Spock's famous catch line. Live long and prosper. You're not going to do the fingers. Oh. There we go. How many can do that? Not bad. Not bad. Well, um, is Spock real? No. No. So what type? What type is it? Fiction or nonfiction? Fiction. Fiction. And there's something called science fiction, which is a lot of fun to read, which is about Star Trek. And um, you got Spock, and you got Captain Kirk, and you got. Uh, uh, Sulu and Chekhov, who can't say his W's or B's, and and they're a lot of fun. And I know some people saw movies with them, and they had a television show. But there's so many books about Star Trek. And if you go to NASA um, and ask them what got them started, you know what they're going to say? Star Trek. Majority of people that go into science, where they first got the idea to go into science, was Star Trek. And there have actually been several books written about how the science of Star Trek has actually led us to a lot of great um, innovations, like the laser pen. Um, you also had uh, the idea of a tachyon particle was invented in Star Trek before we ever found one in real life. So um, a lot of interesting things come out of science fiction. And then we have regular science scientists that are nonfiction. Do we recognize this guy? Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein, yes. You know by the crazy what? Hair. Hair. He had crazy hair. People will forget uh, anything else he did. But uh, does anybody know what he's known for? Well, science, yes, but specifically, you ever sat in a I don't know, where someone made you sit still for five minutes and didn't it seem like a really what? Long time, but it was only what? Five minutes? Well, that's what he came up with. It's called the theory of relativity. Sometimes five minutes is a really long time when you got to sit still. But if you're five minutes on a roller coaster, it happens so what? Fast. So why does that happen? And that's what Einstein's most famous for is the theory of relativity which means that sometimes five minutes seems like it's 20 minutes, and sometimes five minutes seems like it's a second. And how does that happen? And so he did all the math to, to, to prove that. Uh, we have another. She's going to tell you about who she's dressed at. So go ahead and let them know about, about you. Oh, Henry and Alex. Does anybody know who that is? Nope. Okay. Well, I'm from Roanoke, Virginia. Many of you may not know me, but... Those of you who do may have heard of the book, um, The Immortal Life of Henry Alex. Um, this book tells the story of how my dad caused by a certain cancer, um, it leads to an argument, an ethical argument of do our body parts, do they belong to us or do they belong to the doctors? Because um, the doctor took um, part of her body from her and he used it um, and it, it's still used today because it's very, it's, it's a really big thing. So do your body parts belong to you, or do they belong to the doctors? And we mentioned this book because as part of our science club, this was the book of the year. It, it was a, a big deal, and a lot of you are too small to read this book, but the adults in the room aren't. And it, it's bringing up a great debate. If, you, if you've known anybody with cancer, anybody, you know, all the research they do against cancer cells comes from one person, and it's Miss Henrietta Lacks. 
all the cancer cells they do, all they, they all their cures they try. It all comes from her cancer cells. And that everything was taken away without her consent after a surgery. So um, it brings up the debate, like, do, if you get your appendix out, who owns the appendix? You or the hospital? And if they later figure out a medical breakthrough that is billions of dollars, who gets that money? You, who own the appendix, or the hospital who did all the research? So all this stuff is really uh, kind of interesting, but that's a part of nonfiction science books, and they're often about real scientists. And you'll, you'll meet some other ones today uh, outside. Um, Isaac Newton's going to let you know a little bit about what he did. And um, we encourage all young readers that when you pick up a fun book like, you know, um, scary fiction or science fiction, that you also pick up if you want to know anything about the world, like why the frogs, you know, ribbit? Why do crickets, you only hear them chirping at a certain time of the year? Why something happens, you can pick up a science book. It'll tell you why. All right? Now, hopefully you guys will make a good observation here. All right. Hold up. Guys, I need some help here. we got a lot of stuff we got to take care of. All right. Yep. There we go. I'm trying to, trying to stuff it all in the waste speaker. There we go. Just keep keep piling it in. Don't stand in front of it. I can't see. On the side. You can just keep handing it to me. Alright. There we go. There we go. Just keep on going. There we go. Keep on going. I can't I can't feel the beaker. Good. Good one. I'm going to fly up to the top. Yeah, there we go. So, am I ever going to fill this beaker up? No. You think I can? Where's it going?
fingernails. It is just fingernail polish remover. Yes. Why? And what it does is when it, when it comes in contact with styrofoam, it eats it up. And it looks like it's magic, but there was an explanation. And how do we figure this out? Well, we read about it. We read about how we can make something disappear and it not really disappear. Now, another one just uses water. Cheetos. Cheetos, my bad. <laughs> Corn puffs or Cheetos. Well, nowadays people don't like to use styrofoam because it's bad for the environment. So instead, they use what are called um, cornstarch based styrofoam. And it's actually what a Cheeto is made out of. I mean, the fact that we eat something that is now used as packing materials, I'll tell you, it's not healthy. So, but there's a reason why we do this. Now, it's because now when you dump it in your trash and it goes to a landfill and it rains, it will then disappear. And it's a lot safer for the environment. Whereas this stuff, right here, in a couple of days it will harden like a rock and be around forever. There is nothing that will break it down. So, um, when you buy products, even reading about what's on the back of something and seeing if it gets biodegradable, which means that water is going to break it down. And when it's not, well, then it's going to last for a very long time. And we're not very good stewards of the earth at this point. So, it is um, stuff we learn, again, by reading about science. All right, do y'all like that one? Yeah. All right. Yeah. But I know, as always, we want to see something go boom. Don't we? Yeah. yeah. All right. I like okay. <laughs> All right. We're good there. Take a look. <laughs> safety goggles when they're working in the garage or on their car. Uh, a lot of accidents happen because we don't pay attention to safety. So it's really important to be safe. Okay. <laughs> Just a match. Alright. You ready? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> 